how often do you see a performer that's, well, performing, and they're stomping on something, and it makes this beautiful bass drum sound? Well, those are stomp boxes, and there are a ton of them out there. I mean, if you look up stomp boxes, you'll find a ton of them. You got Porch Board, you got Wazinator, amongst many, many others. Now, you might be thinking, Wazinator, what the hell did you just say, Tony? Well, Wazinator is an Australian company that produces really fine stomp boxes. And again, you might be thinking, well, aren't stomp boxes all the same? They, you sit them on the ground, you stomp on them, and they just make a boom noise. Well, I guess on the surface, yes, but they actually have quite a few differences. Now, Wazinator is currently offering three stomp boxes. They have the following. They've got the classic, the drop kick, and then another smaller one called the Baby Grand. And I actually did a little bit of a, well, we'll call it the Wazinator stomp off. So if you've ever wondered what the difference between these three models are, or if stomp boxes could even sound different, I think you'll be very surprised. So let me invite you to my at-home guitar den so we can do this stomp off. Whitney just drove down the driveway and it's a good thing she's gone because I'm about to make a ton of noise. I'm gonna be testing out some stomp boxes by Wazinator. Yes, Wazinator is an Australian company that specializes in super nice stomp boxes. And I've got three of them here. The Baby Grand, the Dropkick, and the Classic. But don't all stomp boxes sound the same? Just boom, boom, boom? I don't think so. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be darn right surprised by the differences in all of these. But first, let me give you a rundown on each. First, we have the classic KSB 319 stomp box. This has a huge wooden base and has a nice deep tone. Next, we have the drop kick. It's slightly smaller. It's built out of a die cast alloy and it sounds huge. And finally, the baby grand. It has a much smaller footprint, but it has the same pickup system as the drop kick. All right, I'm excited for this shootout, but I can't just stomp. I gotta play some guitar too. So I'm gonna be using this Boucher Heritage Goose with Indian Rosewood back and sides. I'm super pumped, but there's one more important decision I need to make. What shoes should I wear? Found them. Got my trusty pair of Red Wings because I think they got extra stomping power. Everything you hear is gonna be coming out of the Bose L1 Model 2. Right next to it, I have the array of stomp boxes from Wazinator. Then the guitar is gonna run through the Fishman Platinum Pro EQDI, and I'm gonna be using that Boucher Heritage Goose 12 fret. First up, the classic. <laughs> Dropkick. And finally, do little bitty baby grand. I think which one is the best well I actually don't feel like there's a best in this situation in fact I all think they're really damn good they're just good at different things so here's my breakdown and don't worry I'll tell you which one I'd pick first and foremost the classic gives you a nice woody tone and the most natural sounding foot stomp it literally sounds like you're stomping on your front porch the drop kick gives you a really fat bass drum sound. Think like 808 kick drum kind of sound. It's, it's really solid, it's really full, it's really punchy. And then the baby grand is convenient. I found it sounding a lot like the drop kick, but with a little less oomph and a little less body, probably because of the smaller size. So which one would I pick? Well, I gotta be honest, I'm a sucker for that big fat bass and I love the drop kick. I found it really comfortable to play on, meaning that it was angled really nicely, so my foot would hit it at a good angle and get really good tone, and I really love the sound. It was just fat and juicy and very stomp worthy. So there you have it, my breakdown of all three of the Wazinator stomp boxes. But I've got a question for you. Which one did you like? So there you have it, the Wazinators in all of their glory. Now, one of the things I wanna mention is I, that was filmed with a phone. And I don't think the deep bass really comes across on 
any of those models. And you might be thinking, well, Tone, if that's the case, why the hell did you record it with your phone? Well, to really get the gist of these stomp boxes, even in the studio, miking them, it's not gonna do a good job or even plugging them in directly. In fact, the best way to experience these stomp boxes is to be in the same room and to run them through a subwoofer, subwoofer which is exactly what I was doing at home. Uh, however, just wasn't able to conjure up that exact sound. I mean, these, are, these stomp boxes, I mean, I had them cranked up halfway, 12 o'clock and they were literally shaking my, my insides. Uh, and, I, and I found that mostly with the Dropkick model, this tank of a one here, it's built out of a die cast alloy kind of footbed. And uh, gosh, it just issues a wonderful, wonderful sound. But I wanna encourage you to check out those stomp boxes. To learn more, please go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT112. You'll see descriptions of each and of course, purchase links if you should, should, should so choose to add one of those to your uh, live music offerings. Okay, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, we talked about the Boucher Studio Goose, a wonderful Canadian guitar. I asked what you thought about distressed guitars, good, bad, or otherwise. We learned about Woody Guthrie and we listened to Red Molly and we also heard Matt's thoughts, Matt from Eddie's Guitars, his thoughts on flight cases. Are they worth it? This week on Acoustic Tuesday, we've already done the infamous now, uh, the now infamous Wazenator Stomp Off. You're gonna learn about an acoustic life from one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. You're actually gonna get a peek into her acoustic life. I'm gonna share with you a new song that's on my upcoming album, yet to be released, but soon. <laughs> and you're gonna hear a guitarist that was recommended by Gwenifer Raymond. More on her and this guitarist in today's episode. I cannot wait to dig in. That's all coming up right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 112. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. But before we dig into that, I have some guitar geek trivia for you. Here is your question. Who originally wrote the song, Blue Moon of Kentucky? Was it A, Elvis Presley, B, George Jones, C, Bill Monroe, or D, the Stanley Brothers. Go ahead and ponder that, dig back in the mental archives, and stick around to the end of the show because I will definitely give you the answer. Now, before I go any further and dig into the Guitar Geek list for the week, I have to introduce my compadre, my uh, confidant, my seriously awesome, cool friend, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. I was trying to come up with another C Excuse name. Me. We had compadre, confidant, yes. cool guy. That's cool. And uh, that's all I had. That's okay. How, how are you doing this fine morning, Noah? Uh, doing pretty good. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying, you know, some La Kroger. Some La Kroger. La Kroger here. <laughs> and uh, always make sure I get a good night's sleep. Before good, good. Getting to the studio on Acoustic Tuesday days. And I'm good. Good. Well, one of the things I want to touch base uh, with, one of the things I want to touch base on with you yes. is something we talked about prior to the show. We entered the studio today. We were sitting at our respective desks, which are right across from one another. Um, and uh, Noah said, oh, that was the thing I wanted to mention to you. And Noah, can you divulge what that thing you wanted to mention to me was? Well, one thing we do when, after a weekend is we, we share any personal wins we might have had over the weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be it a personal best in a run, be it an awesome family day out, whatever the case might be. And in my case, and I didn't write it down, which is why I didn't remember it, <laughs> but it was Billy Strings' new album released. Mm -hmm. I think it was last Friday. Mm -hmm. And so all weekend was nothing but... BS. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like that. Um, I too had a weekend infused with Billy Strings' new album, and I gotta say, I think this is a modern bluegrass masterpiece. And I say it uh, uh, from two varying perspectives. First of all, 
I'm a sucker for artwork. For those of you who have been watching the Acoustic Tuesday show for a while, you know I'm a sucker for album artwork. And I think this artwork takes the cake. It's beautiful, it's done in kind of a, um, uh, American traditional tattoo style. And I wanna say the artist goes by, is it Squishy Eyes? Is that, am I right in that, Noah? Do, do you know? I don't. Okay, I know it's, it's listed on the website and I, of course, always wanna give credit where credit's due. Now, we haven't even talked about the music yet, but the art is awesome. So if you have not laid eyes on that cover art, you just need to. Just do a quick Google search, better yet, purchase the album. I think you'll be happy because the musical offerings are amazing. Now, the day it came out, I listened to it, and I looked at Noah and I said, I feel like this is the Sgt. Peppers of bluegrass. I really do. I think there's there's been so much, uh, it's this wonderful balance between traditional bluegrass, the songs we know and love, the kickoffs, the vocal harmonies, but there's these other paths that Billy and the band take you on that uh, are really indescribable. You have to hear them and be a part of it. And this is one of those albums that you press play on the first song and you don't skip around, period. You just let it roll because it really does take you on a journey. Noah, what are your thoughts on the album? Well, not to mention, there's a special secret guest that pops up on the album that I'm purposely not you gonna say. You just made say. me blow my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, a special secret guest that once you hear the harmony blend, you'll know who it is. Might I add that song lyrically? Yes. Is one of my favorites. It's a good one. Yeah. It's it's all good. I'm not we're not giving any details because you need to listen to the album, plain and simple. Uh, hats off to Billy Strings, hats off to the band, everybody involved making that album. Um, it is a true sonic treat. One that you just want to keep digging into and you keep hearing new things. That's the I think that's the thing I like about it the most. I've listened to it I want to. I'm on my seventh lap. I want to say of this album, and each time I'm picking up on new things, and I love that. And a secret little hidden love of mine within the album is a, a tune called "Guitar Piece," which almost has some John Fahey-esque vibes. It's got some real cool drone action and some also some. Um, Lovely dissonance that I really like that I'm actually going to talk about more of uh, on today's show. In fact, there's another artist that introduces some of that dissonance. Um, and, but we've got a big show ahead of us, Noah. Do you, any parting words on the album that you want to share with the folks? Um, maybe just what I mentioned to you and the thought that it's really cool to see an artist's evolution. Mm. And like if you look back at his last couple albums, you know, his original release and then his previous release, which I think he began to really come up with his own style both packaging mm. art and music and then this is just like that next step of maturity of where it's going it's just pretty awesome to see yeah here. it's it's uh well thanks billy strings it's pretty fantastic to be along for the ride yeah. um well that was kind of a, a semi what do you think yeah. so if you if you all if watching have any thoughts on the new billy strings album please put them in the comments below but i want to i want to dive into the official what do you think segment now if you're new to the acoustic tuesday show this is the show or this is a segment of the show where i ask a question pose a topic and i ask you what you think now these topics may be controversial they may get your guitar geek hair standing on end uh, but of course as an awesome guitar geek community we should generate discussion around these topics because ultimately it makes us all better. Now today's topic is one that I think if I would, was to ask this some years ago, it would create a little bit more controversy, but I still think the thoughts and opinions linger. So I want to pose the topic of torrefaction to you all. And I wanna know what you think. Specifically, do you think it's just hokey BS in the guitar making industry? Or do you actually think it has an impact on sound? Now, Noah and I are gonna weigh in on this, of course, but if I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. Torrefaction is the process of baking a spruce soundboard uh, in an oxygen-free environment so as to essentially age the top. It crystallizes the resins and makes the top wood uh, seemingly age in a matter of, well, however long it takes to actually torrefy the wood. Now, if you are having a hard time putting this together, it's okay, because until I saw it for the first time, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So I found this wonderful video of, from Taylor Guitars that actually shows their process. So let's watch that, and then I wanna know what you think. 
Hi, my name is Tyler and welcome to the Taylor Guitars milling department. Today I'm going to show you the process of torrefaction. Torrefaction allows us to go from this to this. Let me show you how it's done. This is our untorrified Sitka spruce top. This is our torrified Sitka spruce top. Okay, so you've seen the torrefaction process. Now, I wanna know what you think. Do you think it adds to the sound of a guitar? Do you think it's torrefied tops and non-torrefied tops are one and the same and it's just kind of a, a big, you know, smoke and mirrors type thing? Do you think it's worth the extra price involved in getting your guitar to have a torrified top. Obviously when it's being built, not after the fact. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. Now, my opinion is that it absolutely 100% affects the sound. I absolutely love torrified tops. Now I would not have said that before playing them uh, because I just wasn't sure. I mean, I th always thought it looked cool. It, the, 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 the spruce takes on this beautiful warm brown color that, that really looks like an old top. It looks like a top that's kind of seen its outdoor festivals, its days in the sun, if you will. And uh, upon playing a torrified top, I was blown away. Uh, the, the woodiness, the, the character of the tone coming out of the guitar uh, is greatly impacted in my opinion. That's not right or wrong, it's just my opinion and my experience. Furthermore, uh, when I had a chance to go to the Martin factory, they showed me under light what a normal spruce soundboard looks like and what a torrified spruce soundboard looks like. And check this out, you could put a non-torrified piece of Sitka spruce on this light board and you could kind of see through it. You could see through the soft grain and uh, you know you could sense that there was a light behind it. Whereas a torrified top, it was blackout. You couldn't see anything. And I thought that in and of itself was kind of a cool experiment. So it certainly does affect the properties of the wood, uh, both uh, physically and of course sonically. Noah, what's your take on torrefication? So <clears throat> I can't speak to the sound change. I don't have enough experience to be able to to say, oh yeah, I've definitely listened to both guitars, one torrified, one not, and yes, I can tell a difference. However, I will say after learning about the process and what it does to the the bio mass, if you will, I like um, that. It totally makes sense that yeah, why wouldn't it have an effect on the tone? Sure. The, the way that it changes. I also think aesthetically that it's very beautiful on the wood. So I'm down for torrefication. Um, I don't think someone should sell it as, oh, this looks like an older guitar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, th I think it could still be like a new, well-made guitar that you know is new, but just has a different look because of the, the torrefaction. But I'm down. I'm, I'm, I do a thumbs up. I would like to know. I would be interested in the, to know how they uh, come up with the value of a mm. torrified top guitar versus sure. not, like if you had the same model. 
But all in all, I'm I'm for it. You know, this we're like three we're three in a row. We have actually agreed on. I think the, I think the tides are turning, Noah. That that is interesting. Yeah, the stars are aligning. To be. <laughs> But even though we we agree, we have different. It's we have our nuances of why we agree. For sure, for sure. And that that's interesting. For sure. Well, of course, we. That's what Noah and I think. But what do you think? What do you think about torrefaction? Would you pay the upcharge to have your guitar made with a torrefied spruce top? Do you like the look? Do you think it's a bunch of hooey? Let us know in the comments below, and of course, we'll feature those on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. All right, moving on down the list, one of the things that I encourage all acoustic guitar geeks, guitar geeks in general, to do is to play every single day. And in honor of that, I wanted to share with you a song that I wrote that is on my upcoming album. Uh, I haven't actually even told you all the name of the album. Uh, it's not out yet. It'll be out in December. I'm waiting for the vinyl to get pressed as we speak. Uh, the, the album's title is Rodent, and it has a wonderful dedication, and um, we'll, we'll wait for all the details. But one of the tunes on it is called If Light Was Liquid. It's a tune that I wrote. Uh, so I want to give you a little taste of this song, and I also want to share with you my songwriting process uh, afterwards. So let's have a listen to the song. Thank you so much for listening. And again, I want to encourage you to play every day, whatever that means, whether that's a song, whether that's a lick you're working on, a song you're trying to figure out, um, please, please play every day. And one of the things I want to uh, offer up as a little morsel of, I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to call this wisdom. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of my creative processes is to, well, plain and simply tune the guitar in a funky tuning and just try and figure it out. 
try and find something that sounds cool. Um, there's nothing really scientific about it. I don't really dig into any music theory knowledge either. I just tune the guitar to something that sounds cool and, uh, and away I go, try and explore, I try and explore what that tuning offers. Uh, in fact, one of the um, artists I really admire has a similar approach, uh, Glenn Jones, and actually uh, Matt C from Eddie's Guitars has a very similar approach as well. Uh, and it's funny because Noah's like, well, do you want to share the tuning with the folks um, that you used for that song, If Light Was Liquid? And I <laughs> I was like, gosh, you know, no, I, I don't remember the tuning. I, I want to say it's C, G, D, F, A, C. I could be totally wrong. All I know is that uh, F, A, C were the high three strings. That's all I know. I have to check my notes. Whenever I rehearse, I have a notebook of all the tunings uh, to keep keep things straight. So anyways, that's a little insight into my creative process. I hope you enjoyed the tune. And again, I wanna encourage you to play every day. Now back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number, I believe it was 110, uh, we had quite the um, avalanche of comments of wide ranging topics. Uh, some new viewers commented, some old viewers commented. We even have a guitar winner in these comments. So I just wanna dig right into those comments from Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 110. The first comment comes from Tim S. And he says this emphatically, I'm learning. Thank you for the lessons. I am really enjoying it, addicting. I'd have a drink with you, but I swore it off until my friend's local artist backyard concert and after show jam this weekend. I was getting to the point of not getting excited about such things. One week of tack and fretboard wizardry after all these years of half-ass occasional noodling and I'm already feeling more confident and relaxed. Once again, thank you and I'm glad I made the decision. And then he puts at the end, this is not a paid advertisement. Well, thanks for the comment, Tim. And thank you for digging into the program and, and really enjoying it. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're already feeling confidence and uh, feeling some direction on your guitar journey and ultimately having fun and feeling fulfilled. Our next comment comes from Gene W. He says, as a Vietnam vet, I wish the program was around when I came home. He's speaking of guitars for vets. More on our fundraising efforts here in a second. Uh, it might have helped the bad days and sometimes worse nights. Guitars for Vets is a very good thing. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you for watching, Gene. Thank you for your service. And uh, thank you for just, uh, just your all around kind words. We appreciate it. Our next comment comes from a guitar winner. Yes, uh, a couple episodes back, I announced that Andrew White was giving away a Freya 2002J and the winner, lo and behold, is an Acoustic Tuesday viewer. Uh, this comment comes from Guy B. He says, hey guys, wanted to say thanks to Tony for turning me on to the Andrew White Freya 2002J giveaway. I can't believe I won. Never won a thing in my 67 years. Still working the fretboard wizard course. Can't wait to get that guitar here. Got the Guitars for Vets shirts for me and my girl. Wanted to have the Freya here so I could send a picture with the shirts and guitar. Thanks again. Been, been with you since episode three. Another great show. Well, thanks for watching, Guy. Congratulations to you. Uh, one of the cool things is a guy had his guitar signal featured on a very early episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I wanna say it was either in the 20s or the 30s, and I distinctly remember a guy's guitar signal because he was holding up a guitar that, well, it, it was burnt. It literally was burnt. It didn't have strings on it, but it was, it was burnt. It had burn marks on it. And apparently, I, if I have my story straight here, Guy's house, I think, was struck by lightning, and the guitar took, took some impact. Uh, it literally looked like, well, if, if, if Powder, you know that movie about the guy that gets struck by lightning, was a guitar, that was Guy's guitar. Uh, so I think the, uh, uh, the winner of the Andrew White Freya 2002J went to a very deserving and loving home. So thanks for commenting in, Guy, and again, congratulations. Our next comment comes from Russell S. He said, I had an orange wood, but gave it away to two young kids that are learning to play. But while I had it, I was quite impressed by it, especially how well it played slash sounded for the price. Incredible guitar to start on. And he goes on to put in parentheses, by the way, Clapton, hands down. And that was in reference to our What Do You Think segment from that show where we had Slash playing a guild and Clapton playing a guild, uh, both acoustic guitars. And basically we just wanted to ask who wore it better. Kind of like the fashion thing, but you know, with guitars. Anyways, you'll have to check out the episode to see the ad. Our next comment comes from Chris K. Hey Tony, got a small win in this week. On the Let It Go app, I found an Epiphone AJ100 for 48 bucks. I was going on a road trip, road trip and did not want to take my late father's crafter, the guitar that I'm learning on. So I figured if something happened to a $48 guitar, it wouldn't hurt nearly as much as something happening to my dad's. However, the neck was severely bowed. 
Over the next two days, I slowly tighten the truss rod. Without your advice, no way would I have tried this on my own. Now it plays wonderful. Thank you for showing me that I could do this. That's awesome, Chris. Congrats on the small win. And also congrats on just getting the confidence to go ahead and try adjusting the truss rod. I mean, it's cool, you know, and I want to recommend uh, this to, to all you Acoustic Tuesday viewers, guitar geeks that maybe want to dabble in, you know, just that general setup and maintenance of your own guitar. Go on Craigslist, go on eBay, go on, uh, you know, local sites, any sort of classified site. See if you can find kind of a deal guitar and then work on it. See if you can get it into playing shape. See if you can try some things that you've always wanted to try on your guitar, but maybe you were scared. You know, here Chris bought a $48 guitar and along with it came the wonderful lesson on how to effectively uh, 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 correct a truss rod. And I think that uh, that's pretty awesome. So that's 48 bucks well spent. You got another guitar and the lesson all wrapped up in there. And our final comment, maybe my favorite of the batch, I think Noah would agree, comes from JB. He says, hey guys, love your shows and just subscribe to the channel. Thank you for that, Jay. Uh, after 25 plus years of playing, it's fun to, fun to discover new products, tips, techniques, and artists that I would have never heard of without your videos. This is my favorite part. As to the debate of who Noah looks like, it's Rachel Maddow of MSNBC. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, thanks, Jay. Noah, thoughts on that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, Jay, we have this inner studio messaging system. And ever since I read your comment, I've been actually messaging Noah pictures of Rachel Maddow, I think almost every day. <laughs> and Noah says that I'm silently bullying him. Yeah. And I feel when he phrases it like that, I'm really sad about it. But anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> Moving on, uh, one of the things that I mentioned before is that we're in the middle of a huge fundraiser for Guitars for Vets that culminates on November 11th. I'll share really specific details on that here coming up. But one of the things that I wanted to do and I wanted to bring into the Acoustic Tuesday show is I wanted us all as a guitar geek community who supports Guitars for Vets to get in touch with gu what Guitars for Vets actually does. And in my own explorations and, and trying to learn more and being an ambassador, being a, a well-read ambassador for Guitars for Vets, I wanted to feature pictures of the graduates from Guitars for Vets. Now, I, I've, this, this obviously has me stalking their Facebook page and looking for the new round of graduates, uh, which is super fun. And this next round that you're gonna see here, the pictures will be coming up here in a second, are from uh, the Guitars for Vets Richmond chapter. Now, I wanted to congratulate each and every one of them personally, but I did not see names listed on the Facebook uh, post, which is totally fine. I just wanted to share these pictures so that we could all see that there's a human element to Guitars for Vets. I think so often it's an idea and we wanna support it, but there's a little bit of a misconnection between actually seeing the results. And here you, here you have uh, some wonderful graduates. Congratulations to them. And a huge thanks to all the instructors who volunteer their time. And speaking of those instructors, I was delighted because an instructor from the G4V Richmond chapter actually came and visited me here at the studio. He was in town visiting his son, uh, and, and uh, his son works at the Bozeman Brewery. They make great beer, so if you're ever in Bozeman, make sure to check that out. But uh, Mike, Mike was his name, uh, it came in and we started talking, and he said, hey, I'm a, I'm a G4V instructor in the Richmond area. And I thought, holy smokes, this is perfect timing. So Mike and I chatted for a bit, and then I immediately barraged him with questions about the program. And one of the things that was made abundantly clear was that not only does this program affect the people that are going through it and learning guitar and, and helping them funnel their their energy and maybe some of their anxiety through the guitar and kind of uplift them in that way. But this program also greatly impacts the instructors that are volunteering their time and they see the change and they're part of the change. And I think it's something that uh, is really impressive. So hats off to all the G4V instructors and volunteers. Uh, you all do amazing work and it's uh, it's actually given me chills to talk about it right now because you all are making such a huge difference and even the folks that graduate go on to make such a huge difference as well and spreading their love of guitar and also feeling that, that healing power. So hats off to just the Guitar for Vets organization in general for doing such amazing work. It's really, it's really heartwarming. So thank you, thank you, and congratulations to those recent round of that recent round of G4V graduates. All right, coming up, we've got 
an artist that was recommended by Gwenifer Raymond. If you don't remember Gwenifer Raymond, she was in uh, Acoustic Tuesday episode 70. Uh, she is a fantastic fingerstyle player, very much in the American primitive style, uh, but more on that in a second. Uh, we got to visit the mailbag. We had a delicious, uh, delectable treat delivered to us. I'll share that with you all. And then, of course, your trivia answer, your Blue Moon of Kentucky trivia answer. Uh, but first, let's, let's learn more about one of our very own, one of our very own guitar geeks, one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewer family members, one of our very own Tony's Acoustic Challenge members. Her name is Sharon T, also lovingly known as Mama Tack because, well, quite frankly, she is the person that you want to find yourself sitting next to at any guitar function because she is one of the most inspiring people, one of those people that just seemingly breaks the ice and all of a sudden you're her best friend. And uh, she's awesome. I'm honored to call her a, a personal friend of mine and um, it's been so cool to see her develop in her guitar journey from just a spectating spouse to a full-on guitar geek. So here are all the details to that. Here is Sharon's acoustic life story. What inspired me to start playing was having seen my husband start his journey when he was about 60 years old, but I had this vision of playing with him. I wanted to, to be able to sit around at night and just talk guitar. My biggest problems that I run into are time. You know, when I retired, I had this vision of lazy days and sleeping in and having all the time in the world to do everything I want. Uh, the reality is I'm babysitting four days a week. Active kids, they're young, a year and a half and three and a half. So my time is not my own. I can't just pick up the guitar and noodle away or take a lesson. I like that tack can be available to me anytime, anywhere. I can start something, I can put it aside and pick it back up. My teacher's there 24 seven, even if it's the middle of the night. <laughs> Tack has opened up a whole new world of friendships. Um, and one of the things that I never really thought I would be able to do was join in with some of those players. One of the best moments I've had so far in doing this. We used to go to an open mic. Uh, it was the New Leaf Cafe. And it was, you know, every Thursday it was great. And then manage, new management took it over and they were shutting down the open mic component. Which was sad. The last night of the open mic, everybody was there. Um, you know, we had people who hadn't been there in a while come back in just to kind of say goodbye to the place. But it was the, it was the realization of why I had started this because that night I went up on stage with Dom and we played together. We played Beautiful Boy, uh, which we'd been practicing a little. But it was just so fulfilling to be able to to play with him on that last day of the New Leaf Club open mic. And uh, I don't know, it just meant a lot to me. I, I'm looking forward to growing old. Growing old with my guitar and my husband. I'm Sharon Tiana and I'm a guitar geek. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sharon, for sharing your time with us and the details of your journey. It's so cool to see you and Dom playing guitar together. And more importantly, one of the things I should mention that's completely not guitar related, however, it's, it's important to us all, and that is food. Sharon is one hell of a cook. She actually was in Bozeman uh, some years ago. Her and Dom were here, and they invited us over to where they were staying, and Sharon proceeded to make fried meatballs. Now, now let me say this. She's so dedicated to this recipe, she actually brought a cast iron pan on the plane. I don't know how the hell you get that through security. Anyways, it happened. The meatballs were delicious. Sharon, you're an amazing guitar geek. You're an awesome cook as well. And again, thank you for sharing your story with all of us.
Uh, as I've mentioned before on previous episodes, and I will mention it again on today's episode, we are in the midst of a major fundraiser for Guitars for Vets. And you can learn all the details at at the number four vetscom Specifically, I'll outline four ways you can help. Uh, but first, I wanna share with you some folks that took the time to go to at 4 vetscom purchase themselves an Acoustic Tuesday for Vets t-shirt, and they, they one-upped us. Not only did they get the Acoustic Tuesday for, for Vets merchandise, but they also took a guitar snow picture with their Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise. It was like mind blowing. I got these and I was like, holy smokes, this is a dedicated group. Uh, so let's head over to Carrollton, Texas first and check out Keith D's guitar snow. Not to mention the guitar snow, his guitar snow shirt, but also the Acoustic Tuesday for, v for Vets banner that he has hanging, which I think is cool. An awesome addition to any guitar den, if I do say so myself, for two reasons. It looks cool and second, all the proceeds from any of that Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise goes directly to Guitars for Vets. On to Keith's guitar arsenal. On back row, starting on the left-hand table, we got names for all these instruments, and I love it because it goes along with what Noah and I discussed a couple weeks ago on Acoustic Tuesday. So here we go, the back row. A Collings MF mandolin named Ella, a Kentucky KM140S mandolin named Rhonda, a Mitchell Concert ukulele named Lady Laika. I think that's how you say that. I'm gonna go with it. A Cripple Creek Mountain dulcimer named Christy, a fiddle purchased from Robert Bolin, Bill Monroe's last fiddle player named Michelle. And we've actually also featured Robert on one of the Acoustic Tuesday episodes. And long ago, I was able to attend a workshop with Robert, which was super rad. So very cool, small guitar geek world. The front row, left to right, we've got a Spectre Legend electric bass guitar named Bella, a Journey OF660 travel guitar named Antoinette. And in parentheses, he says, wonder if anyone will get the reference. Now, I want to say, was Marie Antoinette the one that got her head chopped off? Noah? Yes. I, yeah. Or now, was that, is that the cake and eat it too? I don't know. Here, you, you, pre oh, say, I'll your, keep th going. say your theory though. You're going to do so. Well, I thought since Marie Antoinette, you know, I'm thinking she got her head chopped off. I think maybe because the Journey guitar is a travel guitar and it's got a smaller headstock. Maybe that's the reference. I don't know. Noah looks like he's up to some serious research, so we'll keep digging. Uh, next, a Recording King RKR80 professional banjo named Allison, a Martin 00018E retro named Rachel, an Alvarez 5021 12 string named Lydia, a Tarada jumbo named Carmen, an, uh, and last, a 1973 Gretsch country gentleman named Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle Tonita. Now, I'd like to think that's named after me, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Our next guitar snow brings us to Neville Island, Pennsylvania from Howard M. And he says this, hi, Tony and Noah. I'm standing proud with my Guitars for Vets shirt and being a proud veteran, I can't wait for the actual event so I can add additional support to such a noble cause. I salute all at Acoustic Tuesday crew for such a wonderful show of respect for those in need. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you, Howard. It really means a lot to See you guitar geeks, you know, in your Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise, really proudly supporting such an awesome cause. And uh, thank you for your service as well, Howard. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, so thank you for uh, thank you for the support. It's really it's really a treat to see these pictures. It's pretty awesome. Our final picture comes from the Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area from Shane R. Uh, Shane R, you might recognize that name. He makes a lot of comments on the show and is a, a frequent, frequent viewer. And he just says this in his message, Go Vets! There he is perched upon his truck in all his guitar geek glory. He says, I'm a longtime supporter of G4V, so thank you, Tony and crew, for your support. Well, thank you, Shane. Love the sticker, love the shirt, and uh, really certainly appreciate uh, the support with our fundraising efforts. Now, talking about fundraising efforts, I wanna let you all know, and I, I've said this a couple of times now, but it's really important because we are in the middle of a huge fundraiser for guitars for vets. And there are four specific ways that you can help out. Okay, and they all live at at the number four vets.com. So just enter that in your browser, at four vets.com, specifically in a separate tab. You don't want to stop watching the Acoustic Tuesday show. And you can support in four different ways. Number one, a monetary donation right off of that site, uh, which goes directly to Guitars for Vets. 
Number two, you can purchase Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise and become an Acoustic Tuesday Angel. Uh, there's a lot of different designs. There's a lot of different products there. So go ahead and pick your favorite and get that sent to you. Uh, and don't forget to submit a picture when you do that. Uh, you can do that right off that uh, at4vets.com site as well. Second, or third rather, I'm losing count. Third, you can recommend to us a brand that you want us to pursue for a donation. This could be a guitar maker, a guitar shop. It could be a... a a piece of gear, uh, some manufacturer that you think is just awesome that you want to share with the world, uh, please recommend that to us. And then lastly, and this is the big one I want you all to do, because it takes like, three seconds. I want you to share this fundraiser. Please share the URL at4vets.com with your guitar geek friends, your guitar teacher, your local guitar shop, anybody within your guitar geek uh, radius. We want to make sure that they all know because the more folks that know about this fundraiser, the more effective it will be and the bigger of a difference we will certainly make. Now, we've had wonderful input from lots of companies. Uh, I'm going to try and name them all. I didn't make a list and I should have before we sat down to film the show. Uh, Brendan from Heartbreaker Guitars, Matt from Eddie's Guitars, both donated. Uh, the folks at Music Nomad donated and we reviewed their um, Acoustalock system some episodes ago. They make some great products. The folks at Bourgeois Guitars went ahead and donated. The folks at Santa Cruz Guitar Company went ahead and donated. The folks at Preston Thompson Guitars are donating. Uh, and for those that I missed, I'm sorry I missed, there's been so many. Oh, the folks at Tonewood Amp uh, are donating. The folks at Orangewood donated guitars to the cause. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, Rachel at Guitar Gallery donated a guitar. Jason Costell, a uh, maker of, of really beautiful, uh, beautifully made instruments, he donated. Uh, so the, the, the support that we've been feeling within this community is pretty amazing. And I just see that growing bigger and bigger. Uh, and it's cool to have us all on this level playing field supporting such an awesome cause. So thank you to everybody that's supported. Thank you to everybody that's shared. Thank you to everybody that's purchased merchandise so far. All right, moving on. I want to dig into the mailbag, Noah, because while I don't have, I don't have what was sent to us because it's not left. I do have evidence, so I'm excited to reveal this to you all. But I wanted to say I got a, a beautiful card from Cameron, really nice sunflower card with some wonderful poetry in it, and he he uh, included a note. He said, "Dear Tony, my name is Cameron. I'm a former student of yours. I'm writing to share my appreciation for what you do." You share with me such profound appreciation for the guitar and, the and that love is something that I will never forget. The way you teach and the way you communicate with your audience is phenomenal. I'm a former student only because I work 40 plus hours a week and most of my spare time at night goes to writing and creating things in my imagination. Very cool and worthy cause. I wanted you to be one of the first people to know that I just finished a beautiful 53 page book of lyrics and poetry to conclude, to conclude and support the stories of so many other great lyricists. As my celebration treat for the most productive little kid ever on Labor Day weekend, I bought myself my first acoustic guitar. It makes me happy every time I get an email from you guys at TAC headquarters. Take care, Tony and friends, Cameron B. Well, thank you, Cameron. That's pretty awesome. And congratulations on completing your work. That's, that's definite worthy of celebration there. Um, now this next note you'll see if I can hold this to the light, I don't know if you can see this, but you can almost see through the paper. Uh, being, uh, that being evidence that there was something consumable in this package. And uh, man, did we consume. Uh, is this, <laughs> the, the letter goes on to say this, to the tax staff. After hearing Tony speak of my peanut butter whiskey and fudge comment on one of the Tuesday videos, I spoke with Allie and asked her if you might be interested in some of my homemade fudge. I did warn her that it is very good and addictive and possibly fattening. She said that you would all be for it. So here it is. Call it a thank you for the last Acoustic Life Festival. That event forced me out of my safe space and had me doing the impossible, playing in front of others, for better or worse. I tried to talk one of my jam club members who also attended into doing the open mic, but he adamantly refused. I knew his pain. When we returned home, he actually posted a video, his first and so far only, to the TAC website. That is something I wouldn't have done even after doing the open mic and band performance at ALF. So then I felt obligated to follow suit, and here we are. I have posted several videos. So anyway, it was fun at the Acoustic Live Festival, and it was great to meet you all. I know I did give Tony a bad time, but he could handle it. I don't think it was a bad time. 
it was it was a wonderful series of fantastically timed jokes. That's what I'll say, Charlie. Um, I am hopeful to make it again next year and see everyone. There's a plethora of talent and great attendees. They were all awesome. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the fudge and do not blame me for the weight gains. Love you all, Charlie C. Well, I wanna thank her for the fudge. Uh, it is delicious and um, we were excited, although it did show up. I think the postal service had its way. I think maybe they, they knew what was in it and maybe wanted to bust in because it looked like somebody hit this box with a hammer. But, but nonetheless, the fudge was there and it was beautiful. Although maybe slightly even tenderized for us. <laughs> Not to mention, if I may, yeah, um, Charlie's guitar arsenal was shared. Mm. We shared a couple episodes back. Absolutely, we had some nice little Easter eggs in there that we discussed as well. Yes, and and and, and hats off to Charlie for performing at the Acoustic Life Festival. That was that was seriously cool. Um, so many people performed their very first open mic. Um, it was really inspiring to see everybody get up there and, and to feel the support in the room. It was really a, a gathering of some, some really amazing supportive guitar geeks. So, so cheers. That's just it made me remember back to that, uh, those moments. It's pretty awesome. May I also add yeah. about the fudge story? Yeah. As I see it in my mind now, I love how it got here. No one touched it. Like it just kind of sat mm -hmm. in our break area. Mm -hmm. And I know we were all thinking Who's gonna be the one? Because, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> because once it starts, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. That is, you know, Noah, you bring up a fantastically valid point, because this has happened on numerous occasions. We've we've gotten wonderful, wonderful food and libations from from you Acoustic Tuesday viewers and just guitar geeks all all across the world, and. Um, what sticks out in my mind is those fudge nutter butters that my parents sent. <laughs> and Noah's like, when are we gonna tap into those? And I think I went downstairs, I went to the bathroom or something and I came upstairs and the box was open. And I was like, well, Thank it's, you. it started. Right. I proceeded to just clear out a whole row of those bad boys. Yep. Anyways, <laughs> moving right along. Noah, yes. any mail, mailbag uh, receptions on your part? Uh, thank you for asking, yep. Tony, but no. I don't know. I don't know what you have up your sleeve over there. Sometimes you hide stuff. And... I know. <laughs> so that's why I appreciate it. Part of me chuckles because it's not very likely, but I'm also appreciative that you still ask. Well, I got to include you. I did get some cool digital mail uh, uh, mailbag arrivals. I, pr I went on a pre-order binge. I pre-ordered... Uh, Rob Ikes and Trey Hensley's newest album, World, World, I think it's World Full of Blues, I think it's the title, now the name escapes me. Um, so that's on its way. I pre-ordered Alexa Rose's new album, which I wanted to mention. So I featured Alexa Rose a couple episodes back. She didn't have an album available. It's now available, okay? It's on Big Legal Mess Records, which I thought was a great name for a record company. Uh, so please check that out. Uh, Alexa is a, is a friend of mine and, and somebody who is a, incredibly talented writer, so please check her out. Uh, and then the other one, uh, Blink-182's new album. That's my guilty pleasure. I pre-ordered that for myself and my brother-in-law because we we love Blink. We love Blink-182. I can't get enough. Even though they're not the original Blink-182, but who's talking about that? Well, that's fine. It's still really hooky, poppy, punky music. That's true. Oh, and for Acoustic Tuesday viewers who want to know... Alexa Rose was featured in AT episode 97. Thank you, Noah. You yeah. rock. Thank yeah. you for doing that. You're welcome. Speaking of previous Acoustic Tuesday artists, let's take a second and talk about Gwenifer Raymond. Gwenifer Raymond, featured back on Acoustic Tuesday episode 70, is a must listen for everybody that's interested in finger style guitar, alternate tunings, American primitive style guitar, and just general instrumental acoustic music. She's awesome. She plays with such uh, emotion. I I've, I've never heard somebody that can play a song that doesn't contain lyrics that can convey so much emotion. It's really, really solid. But this next artist comes from uh, uh, an indirect recommendation from her. I would love to meet Gwenifer Raymond. I'd love to hang out, chat guitars with her. And I'd love to just swap songs because I think she's, a, uh, she's an artist I really look up to. And uh, naturally, we're Facebook friends. I know, no big deal. Um, <laughs> but, but she posted this video uh, of a live show, and I'm gonna share it with you here in just a moment. 
And I just saw this guy playing guitar and I was I was infatuated. I was like, who is this individual? So let me show you. Here's the video that, that she posted that I saw that tipped me off to this artist. So who is this man so seemingly entrenched in his music? Well, his name, or what he goes by, is Dr. Turtle. Uh, you can try your best to do research and find albums. You can try your best to find a website or anything, and it's really hard to. But I think he's an artist that you need to know because He's very much along the same lineage as the John Fahey's, the Gwenifer Raymond's, the Glenn Jones's. Um, very cool alternate tunings, uh, very uh, um, wonderful use of dissonance, the kind that makes you mildly uncomfortable, but you keep coming back for more, kind of like a hot sauce that's just hot enough to get your mouth on fire, but you just want to keep eating it. That's how I would equate uh, his approach to music. It's that hot sauce you just keep coming back to. It burns, but you love it. That's the kind of dissonance that he introduces. Weirdest parallel I've ever made, for sure. Or metaphor, what is it? Metaphor, analogy? I'm all confused now, because I tried one <laughs> earlier, and I didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> but anyway, so, so Dr. Turtle. So I did enough research to find his band camp, which apparently I think is the only place you can find his albums. Uh, you can listen to them all. They're a delight. Uh, just put them on and let them play. Uh, but the first song I'll have you listen to is a tune called Lullaby for Democracy. Just a solid driving tone. That's what I love about his music. And I think another great example, and probably um, my favorite song name so far I've ever run across, uh, this next song we're gonna listen to is called Rotisserie Graveyard. I just picture like, I don't know, grave, a gravestone on a rotisserie or maybe the whole graveyard, like really crazy, like other world, like the upside down, it spins around. I can't help but think of chicken. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and the last song I'll have you listen to. Now this album, I don't believe is available anymore, uh, but you can find it on YouTube. This is where I found it. Uh, the, the song is called Dead From The Beginning, Alive Till The End. So here that is. To learn more about Dr. Turtle, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT112. You'll be able to see all of those songs in their entirety. And also there's a link to that Bandcamp page that I was referencing where you can access all of his albums. And I believe, I want to say there's a Patreon thing where you can support his music, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if that's a defunct thing or if it's still actually working. Uh, I couldn't really get to the bottom of that. But anyways, definitely an artist you need to know if you're a fan of John Fahey, if you're a fan of, um, wow, all the names just go away all of a sudden, cool. If you're a fan of John Fahey, if you're a fan of Glenn Jones, um, Daniel Bachman, any of those American primitive type guitarists that, that really have that signature tone, I think Dr. Turtle definitely fits in there. So uh, thanks, Gwenifer, for sharing that post, and thank you, Dr. Turtle, for making fantastic music for us all to lay our ears upon. All right, Noah, 
we're, we're nearing the end. We got to wrap up our Guitar Geek trivia. So as a, a quick courtesy reminder to you viewers, here was the question I posed at the beginning of the show. Who originally wrote the song Blue Moon of Kentucky? Was it A, Elvis Presley, B, George Jones, C, Bill Monroe, or D, the Stanley Brothers? Well, if you answered C, Bill Monroe, you are, without a doubt, 100% correct. Blue Moon of Kentucky is a waltz written in 1946 by bluegrass musician Bill Monroe and recorded by his band the Bluegrass Boys for Columbia Records on September 16th, 1946 for release in early 1947. At the time, the Bluegrass Boys included vocalist and guitarist Lester Flatt and banjoist Earl Scruggs, who later formed their own bluegrass band, the Foggy Mountain Boys. Both Flatt and Scruggs performed on the recording, and Bill Monroe supplied the vocals on this song. The song, described as a bluegrass waltz, had become a United States-wide hit by 1947 and also became enormously popular popular with other bluegrass country and early rockabilly acts. The song was revered at the Grand Old Opry and became Kentucky's official state song as well. Pretty awesome stuff. And I do believe, I know Elvis recorded that, but I want to say, I think George Jones recorded that as well. And I want to say the Stanley Brothers also recorded it. It was kind of a phenomenon. I think it still is to a degree. It's a catchy tune. Hmm, it's a maybe. catchy waltz. But Elvis didn't treat it as a waltz. I'm pretty sure he, he kind of... Presleyatized, presleyatized it. Pres. Is it Presley? Preslified. Or Presley. Press. Presley. Presley. Pres? What did I say? Is it press or pres? pres? I think it's either one. Okay. You know, one of the things I noticed, um, and this might be a Canadian thing, not to bring back the debate of Canadian bacon. This has nothing to do with it. Uh, a yeah, popular. You didn't, sh you didn't share one of those comments, did you? A popular. No, I didn't, because I was getting slammed about Canadian <laughs> bacon. Um, a popular pronunciation of what I would say the word resource, that's how I would say it, but in, in Canada, they say resource. I noticed that. Hmm. Maybe that's just, a, maybe that's not, maybe that's not an official so Canadian thing. So maybe it's Canadian to say S's with more of a Z sound? Yeah, so maybe in Canada, Elvis is Presley and- Elvis, and Elvis, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. <laughs> That's good. Elvis Presley. I don't know. I have this. I have this infatuation with Canadian culture. I really do. I, I. It started. It started when I was young, and I watched Strange Brew for the first time. A fantastic movie. One that I revisit probably each year to Whitney's um, maybe mild disappointment <laughs> that I haven't grown up. I've got Strange Brew action figures. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge hockey fan. And uh, yeah, my dad used to go up on this Canadian fishing trip, which unfortunately I never got to tag along to, probably for good reason. I was too young to handle what, what the boys were discussing up there. Mm. Anyways, let's take a, uh, oh gosh, we're almost done. We're, we're about ready to wrap up the show, Noah. Yes, now you're gonna do a metaphor. Yeah, we've, um, well, we've written a letter. We have uh, made sure all of the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. We double checked the to address. We put the return address on so that if the letter does get lost, it will come back to us. We've placed the stamp on the upper right corner of the envelope. We've turned it over and applied the Acoustic Tuesday wax seal so as to prevent any tampering with the letter. And we've dropped it into the satchel of our local mail carrier who rides horseback through the valleys and fields to deliver Acoustic Tuesday goodness all across the land. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I got like several images there. Yeah, it's it good. It's like a mix between postmodern mail and and Pony Express with maybe a little bit of like medieval hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> good. Yeah, that was the wax seal piece. I thought you'd really latch onto that. Uh, All right, well, let's take a sneak peek into next week on Acoustic Tuesday. As you can see, things are getting a little bit more Halloween y around here. It's my little zombie man. He eats brains. He'll be here next week. Uh, a sneak peek into next week on Acoustic Tuesday. We're going to get a visit from an Acoustic Tuesday artist. Yes, they answered our questions, and you will see that next week. You're going to hear a fabulous flat picker with Bluegrass Bloodlines, which if you say Bluegrass Bloodlines three times fast, kudos to you if you don't mess it up. And we're going to get Matt's thoughts, Matt from Eddie's Guitars, his thoughts on a Montana Luthier. That's all coming up next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a deep dive on anything I've ever talked about on any Acoustic Tuesday show. 
Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. We certainly appreciate it. We appreciate you being a guitar geek, and we appreciate your enthusiasm, and of course, your commenting and subscribing and sharing of the show. And one last thing, remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. See you next Tuesday.